Senate Resolution 212, condemning the attack on Emanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Charleston, South Carolina, and expressing encouragement and prayers for all affected by this evil assault. Is there objection to proceeding to the measure? Without objection, the Senate will proceed to the measure. Thank you, sir. I ask unanimous consent the resolution be agreed to, the preamble be agreed to, the motion to reconsider be laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Is there objection? Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. I stand before you today, before the nation, not as a senator, not as an elected official, but as a humble South Carolinian. The past week has been one of terrible tragedy and amazing unity. Last Wednesday night, we experienced an unimaginable tragedy. Nine men and women, nine mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, sons, daughters, lost forever. The hateful and racist actions of one deranged man have changed nine families forever. It has changed South Carolina forever, Charleston forever. But what we saw from the nine families at last Friday's bond hearing was simple. It was powerful and absolutely the best of who we are as Americans. Uh, just a few minutes ago, I was back in the cloakroom and I had the opportunity to talk to one of the victim's son, Daniel Simmons, Jr. And I was talking to them back there and I said, is there anything you want me to share when I go to, on the floor of the Senate? He said, please share that God cares for his people. God still lives. I was amazed. And then he said with great enthusiasm and energy, a sense of excitement, uh, that this evil attack would lead to reconciliation, restoration, and unity in our nation. Those were powerful words. It is with great sadness and amazing hope that our future as a nation has been changed. It has been changed because one person decided to murder nine. It has been changed because the response of those nine families has been so courageous, so inspiring. And if you would permit me, I will read the names of those nine individuals. We honor the Reverend Sharonda Coleman Singleton, a beloved teacher, coach at Goose Creek High School. Her son Chris has shown us all what an amazing mother she was through her his strength over the past six days. We honor Cynthia Hurd, whose love for education has been shared for over 31 years as a librarian in the public library system. We honor Susie Jackson, who at 87 years young, still offered her beautiful voice to the choir and had recently returned from visiting her family in Ohio. We honor Ethel Lee Lance, who served her church with pride, whose daughter calls her the strong woman who just tried to keep her family together. We honor DePayne Middleton Doctor, who dedicated her life to serving the poor and helping her students as an enrollment and counselor at Southern Westland University. We honor my good friend, Reverend Clemente Pinckney, 
an amazing man of faith, a great dad, and a wonderful father. We honor Tawanza Sanders, beloved son of Tyrone and Felicia, whose warmth and a heartfelt spirit has kept us moving. We honor the Reverend Daniel Simmons Sr., whose granddaughter said my granddaddy was an amazing, amazing man. It seemed like every time he spoke, it was pure wisdom. And we honor Pastor Myra Thompson, who served the Lord with grace and dignity. She loved her children, her grandchildren, and her great-grandchildren. If you would just pause for nine seconds, a second for each one, I would appreciate it. Thank you. In closing, I want to thank all my colleagues in the Senate and in the House for their kind words over the past week and for the prayers that continue to come into our city from across the nation. We are Charleston, we are South Carolina, and we are absolutely united. And we are committed to replacing hate with love, pain with kindness, and ill will and hostility with goodwill and comfort. I yield to Senator Graham. Thank you, and uh, I want to just Senator recognize. From South Carolina. Thank you. I just want to recognize Senator Scott. We all know Tim is a man of quiet faith. He does it when no one's looking, by the way. I remember being in the cloakroom watching a basketball game, which is consistent with me. And Tim's over in the corner with headphones, and I said, what are you listening to, or what are you doing? He says, I'm doing my Bible study, study very sheepishly. So, Tim, you've been a great comfort to our state because you are truly a man of God. To the rest of you, I, I want to tell people in South Carolina, the Senate, we've got a lot of differences and we display them a lot. I wish you could have heard what was said to me and Tim. Everybody in this body has come up to us in one way or another and said the most kind things. So the United States Senate, we've got our problems, but we're still a family. So thank you all from all over this country for the kindness you've shown during these difficult times. Very quickly, I don't know how you can sit with somebody for an hour in a church and pray with them and get up and shoot them. That's Mideast Tate. That's something I didn't think we had here, but apparently we do. I just can't imagine what it takes of an individual to be welcomed in a church. And here's what happened. He went to Charleston with a plan. The people in the church had no idea who he was or what he had in mind. And he came into the church and he was sitting in the pews by himself and they invited him up for the uh, Bible study and spent an hour with him. And he said they were so nice I could I almost backed out. That says a lot about them. It says a lot about him. But Tim mentioned something that I cannot get over. Within 48 hours of having your family member murdered, they appear in a public setting looking the guy in the eye and say, you've ruined my life, but I love you and I forgive you. That is a level of love and understanding that can only come from some higher authority. I don't have that within me. So when it comes to representing South Carolina, Tim and I will do our best, but on our best day, we're nowhere close to these people. There's no politician in America can represent their state better than the people of a Mother Emanuel AME Church when they went to a public place, looked the killer in the eye and say, I forgive you, I am praying for you. I wish we could muster that kind of love for each other just for a little bit. What would America be like? Thank you all for your kindness. I ask unanimous consent that the votes following the first vote in the series be 10 minutes in length. Is there objection? Without objection.